spectacular side as we approach our broadcast location in downtown Orlando through the air. Welcome everyone to a great Sunday night with the NBA here on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with Greg Anthony and two Hall of Famers. Doris Burke here at the table and on the sideline, David Aldridge. Hey, Dave. Well, Aaron Gordon is progressing as a shooter. He said, what I've done is connected my three, my pull-up, and my free throw. They're all the same shot now. I'm going to keep trusting my skill, and eventually, it'll all come together. With my motor, I feel like whatever I'm doing out there, I can just keep going and going. Kevin? Tremendous athleticism. Thanks, D.A. Let's check out the Western Conference standings right now that we're here in the new year. You take a look at Los Angeles, holding on to second spot in the conference. A great season for them so far. Yeah, and I think the Clippers, for me, they've taken the league by storm this season. I felt like they were maybe a year ahead of schedule in terms of being an elite group. Uh, but you look at them right now, and here they are. Yeah, they weren't really on anyone's radar before the season began, but they're definitely there now. And the Clippers starting five. Patrick Beverly out there with Paul George. Then it's Ivica Zubas. Then there's Kawhi Leonard. And it's Harrell in a power forward. And for Orlando, at the four and the five, we have Gordon and Vucevic. DJ Augustine out there with Terrence Ross. And it's Isaac in at the small forward position. What great athleticism with both these teams. I mean, it, every move is so graceful, so skilled. I mean, majestic. It is, Kevin. There's an explosiveness. There's this speed that is absolutely incredible to watch. Every possession up and down the floor could have the potential highlight reel. Shot clock at six. George against Gordon. The shot by George, no good. Here's Isaac. Right side, Gordon. Shoots over Zubats, and it's Gordon missing. And pushing it up, here's Los Angeles. Leonard's got the ball, and it's Beverly missing. And it's Orlando's ball. Augustine looking around, stolen by Zubats. George against Ross. And now just over a minute played here in the first. And that one's good, George. There's a rhythm with which Paul George plays the game of basketball. That pace is so important. Now Augustine, he's coming off a 10-point game against Boston. He was active all night on the defensive end as well. With all the steals he came away with, he had him totally rattled. Just three to shoot. Vucevic gets double teamed. Misses that one. He's 0 for 1 from the floor. On the wing, George. He's guarded by Ross. Shoots a fader. The shot by George, no good. Well, he's a quality mid-range shooter, but he can't get that one to go. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. And a career high in scoring doors for Terrence Ross last season. Boy, he thrived in the instant offense roll off the bench. This guy unleashed into an aggressive, assertive, shot-hunting scorer. What a season he had. First free throw is good. A superstar summer, Greg, for the Los Angeles Clippers in Kawhi Leonard and in Paul George. Greg, they have two elite wings, great defenders in their prime. Give them credit, but but also Kawhi Leonard pushing the levers behind the scenes. He, he wanted another superstar to join him in recruiting Paul George, who still had two years left on his deal in OKC. Kawhi took unprecedented control of his free agent destiny. Now, here is George. Against Miami, he was really on his game. And it's Jonathan Isaac with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Outside Leonard. The pass to Beverly. 
Some nice ball movement by the Clippers. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Leonard. Really just struggling here in the first few minutes. Five attempts with only one fall. Rejected by Isaac. You can see the long wingspan of Jonathan Isaac coming into play twice on the pipes. Augustine passes to Gordon. Back to Augustine. Vucevic trying to get open. And there's Augustine. That's good on the assist by Gordon. And they don't want to get in a habit of giving him open looks from three. First quarter still, but not who you want to leave open. Clippers trail by three. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Bounce pass from Beverly. Here's Leonard. Los Angeles with another miss. Well, tremendous defensive effort on the interior. That's the kind of contest you want. Augustine with it. Taking a look at the scoring numbers right now, he averages about nine points a game. Just five to shoot. Gordon finds Augustine. Missed inside. And he thought he had a clear path to the hoop, but the defense didn't give up on that play and cut him off. Boy, the vertical that Aaron Gordon has helps him on the defensive end twice on the pipes with that block. Boy, this guy is a good finisher, so he misses a chippy. That's tough to take. Leonard with no one around. And it's Leonard again missing. Magic leading by three. Here's Isaac. That's in Augustine with the assist. Well, D.J. Augustine has been around this league a long time. He does not miss open teammates. And so it's Leonard with it. He'll bring it up for the Los Angeles Clippers. Last time they met was in Los Angeles. In the last meeting of these two teams, they were really sharp defensively, disrupting the flow of their offense and causing a ton of turnovers. I think they took tremendous satisfaction from that performance and ended up winning going away. So is it something they'll look to repeat tonight? Now here's Gordon. Kawhi Leonard unable to get his shot to go. Shoots over Leonard. And Orlando again with the bucket. I'll tell you this, the interior game of Aaron Gordon is coming along. He is looking more comfortable and more confident in there. Clippers trail by seven. So timeout called here, the first for Los Angeles. Now in his sixth season in the NBA, hard to believe Aaron Gordon is still just 24 years of age. Not much older than some rookies coming in. You wonder what his ceiling will be. And let's check out a breakdown. Looking at some stats for George. And if you look at his numbers from an analytic standpoint, the first thing you'll see is that his true shooting percentage is on the rise. This month, he's been a far more efficient scorer than he was earlier in the season. Leonard on the wing. Pass to Beverly. They need this one. Orlando grabs the miss. And I thought that was going to drop. It looked good from here. Ross finds Augustine. Baseline try. And the rejection by Zubats. Gordon against Beverly. Nice catch and finish on the alley-oop. One thing that stands out over the course of Leonard's career is how efficient and effective he has been on the offensive end. Now here is Augustine. Outside Gordon. Back to Augustine. Leonard with the steal. And oh, here we go with George. Nobody back. And it's George finishing it off. Hey, you're asking for trouble now if you let Paul George get room to run. Excellent transition and superb at getting himself in the right position. Augustine against Beverly. Outside Gordon. Back to Augustine. For the three, gets the three-pointer to fall. Augustine's got a pair of threes now in the first quarter for the Magic. You can't just stop when there's a pick set up. Got to fight over it as a defender. And, Greg, you know exactly what that takes. It takes energy. It takes activity. It takes intensity. 
Now here's Beverly. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Outside Gordon. To the middle. Stolen by Zubox. And now here's George. The fast break opportunity. Pull up Jay. And it's Leonard. That time on the assist by George. What a smooth looking release from Kawhi Leonard. Doing work in the mid range. That is his comfort zone. Now here is Augustine. He has six. Passes it to Ross. Six on the shot clock. The Magic need to get a shot off here. Augustine finds Gordon over Harrell, and it's Gordon missing. They've been beating them to a lot of those loose balls and rebounds here to start. Leonard, no luck. Right now trying to get into a rhythm, but so far this quarter, boy, he is struggling to make anything go down. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Thus far in his young career, Jonathan Isaac's strength, I think, Doris, his defense. That has everything to do, Kevin, with his blend of length and mobility. This guy can be extremely disruptive on that end of the floor, and Jonathan Isaac will grow offensively as well. First free throw is good. No doubt uh, passing is a premium for this team game of the NBA. We love the individual star power, but it is a team game. Are there any playmakers out there that don't get Doris, you think, enough credit for all that they do for their team? Well, the first guy that comes to mind is a man that Steve Kerr described as probably the smartest single basketball player he has ever been around, and that's Andre Iguodala. The numbers in terms of his scoring, obviously not eye-popping, but his incredible defense and then his elite passing skills have been so critical to so many championship teams. On the wing, George. And here's Jackson. He's certainly been a consistent piece of their offense, averaging about 14 and a half points a game. Buries it from three-point range. All right, defensively now, you've got to find a way to slow this guy down because he's putting it to you. Now, here's Fultz. He's guarded by Williams. It's Fournier on the wing. Here's Bamba. Nails the baby hook. And the Magic lead by five. Well, Mo Bamba, if he gets that kind of position, turn the lights out. Los Angeles is gone, just one of four from three-point range here in the first. George looking around. Bamba with the block. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by Bamba. Ken Burch has checked in for Orlando. And here is Los Angeles now, trailing by five. They come in fresh off a win against the Heat. Yeah, in that game, I, I thought they took advantage of some sloppy play, but give them credit. They turned mistakes into points. Well, you have to capitalize when your opponent has miscues, Greg, and give this team some credit. Every time that opponent turned it over, they capitalized. And it's the Clippers with the ball after the Magic pick up two. George, no good. Orlando leading by seven. Here's Fultz. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Lock at six. High post try. Fournier's shot is off. Yeah, but the hand in the face. It's critical that you contest his shots every time down the floor. Los Angeles with another miss. Orlando's gone two of two from three-point range here in the first quarter. Here's Fultz. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. Well, obviously a rough start to the career of number one pick Markel Fultz. The shoulder injury sort of takes away his shooting ability when the Sixers trade him away. You're rooting for this young man to get back to his game. 
This is his first trip to the line tonight. Not the best statistic for him in terms of his performance at the line. Very low numbers. And he knocks down the first one. And some have said, Doris, for Fultz, not just physical issues dogging him early on. Well, I think you have to consider, Kevin, when you are the number one overall pick, extraordinary pressure comes with that. So now with a new team, perhaps that fresh start gives Markel Fultz an opportunity to showcase his big-time talent. He hits one, then misses the second attempt from the free-throw line. Well, think back to the 2017 draft, guys. Some were surprised to see Markel Fultz be the first pick. And when you think back on that draft, there's certainly a lot of what-ifs. Ornier finds Aminu. A chance there to push it to double digits, but it's off the mark. And it's Williams with the ball for the Los Angeles Clippers. Eight-point game. Shamit the pass to Williams. Thirteen feet away, Aminu grabs the miss. Orlando, they've gone six of 14 shooting the ball since the start of the game. And Fultz gets it to go. Well, this has to contribute to Markel Fultz's confidence, showing right there he can get through the defense. Clippers trail by 10 some tough offensive sets they want to turn it around yeah right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum pass to Shamit. good on the 13 footer 143 left in the first now here's Fultz he's guarded closely The pass to Bamba. Here's Birch. Just five on the clock. Fournier for three. Some solid defense there from Jackson. L.A. has gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. Williams. His fourth shot. His fourth tonight. Boy, what a nightmare quarter for this guy. He's playing right into the hands of the defense at this point. Volts kicks to Aminu. Over Williams. Aminu with the bucket. Well, Markel Fultz continues to develop his floor awareness. Passes like that will create all kinds of chemistry. Fifty-six seconds left here in the opening quarter. Williams looking over the floor. A floater. And the layup is up and in. And after missing four straight, he finally gets one to go. Two for one opportunity here if they want it. And no doubt, Kevin, if I'm them, I go for it. Volts kicks to Fournier. Here's Birch. And it comes off the front of the rim. Clippers trail by eight. Three-pointer. And it's Shamit missing. Orlando's gone two of four from beyond the arc to start the game. And there's Fultz on the assist by Bamba. Fultz has got five now. Well, make no mistake, Markel Fultz, because of his athletic burst, can score on the interior. That's nicely done. Now Williams. It's stolen by Aminu. And so it's the Orlando Magic. With a 10-point lead, some breathing room heading into the break. A terrific tempo and a great pace. The fast break has been a central part of their offense. And don't go away. We'll be right back. George had that nasty broken leg back in 2014. He describes what inspired him to come back even stronger. 
my inspiration really came from my mother. You know, her dealing with stroke, her dealing with really being down and out. You know, I saw her fight back. That was enough for me. In my darkest days, uh, I knew it was nothing to what my mom went through, and she came out perfectly fine, so. Well, what a story. George worked hard to get back and is not disappointed in his return. You know, recovering from a devastating injury is never easy, but George's perspective and commitment helped him to overcome it. And so far through one quarter, it's been a lopsided game. We'll see if that changes here in a second. And guys, for the Magic, what jumps out to you so far, numbers-wise? Guys, I love their defense in that first period. They were in position and just challenging shots. Well, I think they combined great intelligence with great effort, and you can see the results. Fournier out there with Markel Fultz. Then there's Al Farouk Aminu. Then it's Bamba, and it's Birch in at the four-man position. That's who's out there for Orlando. Five to shoot. From deep three-point range, and Bamba pulls it down. Bamba's got his fourth rebound in this one. And out of bounds as Los Angeles gains possession. Listen, turnovers happen. You've got to move on to the next play. Clippers trail by 12. And the Magic, one of those franchises that's still looking for its first title. And Greg, they've been to the NBA Finals twice, but boy, did they run up against two of the all-time great individual closers in history. 1995, Hakeem Olajuwon says no to the Magic. 2009, the Black Mamba. Kobe Bryant says, no, sir, I'm getting another championship. Now, here's Shannon following the miss by Marcus Morris. Obviously, a mix-up defensively on that possession. Here's Fultz. He has five. A minute and a half gone here in the second quarter. Right side, Fournier. Three-pointer. Sinks the triple. Fournier's got the lead up to 13 now for Orlando. Well, you love the lead that Fournier has taken in this area. This guy, a very dangerous shooter. Jackson deciding where to go with it. Pass to Morris. The Clippers need to get off a shot. And the wide open shot from Green. Offline with his three. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. They get it back. Oh, the Whoa. power on that prudence. Well, excellent pursuit of the basketball by Mo Bamba. Love his effort there. And a little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the second quarter. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. And the dunk by Bamba. Well, Mo Bamba, no doubt. And so it's Jackson who brings it up for Los Angeles. Trailing by 17. Can they get it? Rebound by the Magic. Their last game, a win against Boston. Looking to carry it into this one. I thought they had a solid game plan coming into that one. And then they made good adjustments along the way. I thought their game plan was really spot on, Greg. And we saw that in their scoring more than anything else. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldrin. Well, for Nick Vucevic, there were some great first last season. His son, Philip was born in December. And then dad made his first all-star appearance. Nick is from a basketball family. He said, I'll enjoy telling my son the stories, like my dad did with me. We'll see if he likes the game of basketball. I think he will. Kevin? Well, D.A., it's certainly in his genes. Thanks for that report. Los Angeles calls timeout. So the term unicorn has arisen for shot blockers who can also space the floor. Mo Bamba on that list, guys. So Orlando going with an almost entirely new group here. Vucevic checked in for Ken Birch. Aaron Gordon comes in for Al Farouk Aminu. Ross is checked in for Evan Fournier. And DJ Augustine subbed in for Fultz. A big group substitution here for the Clippers. Zubats is checked in for Jermichael Green. Harrell comes in for Morris. Leonard, he's checked in for Landry Shamit. And it's Patrick Beverly in for Lou Williams. And coming in, Mo Bamba comparing his game to that of Joel Embiid's. 
outdoors. Did you see that? Well, I've heard others mention Rudy Gobert with a three-point shot, and that might be a closer comparison. We're going to have to watch and see what Mo Bamba hangs his hat on on both the offensive and defensive end. Comparisons a bit early at this point. Zubats the pass to Jackson. Left side, Leonard, to stop the drought. And again, it's the Clippers missing. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. Down low, Augustine finds Bamba. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Seven-footers typically challenge as far as mobility. But Doris, you look at Mo Bamba, he appears to be very fluid. Well, he's listed at seven feet. He's actually 7-1 in shoes. And despite that height, Kevin, as you mentioned, Mo Bamba is a very fluid athlete. He's got exceptional feet, tremendous upside for Bamba. No good on that one. How about this time of the year? We hear uh, early talk about end of the season awards. When you're thinking about who you'd vote for MVP or whatever, Doris, uh, when do you start giving consideration to those topics? You know what's fascinating, Kevin, is where all the major awards are considered, particularly the MVP, it feels like there's a narrative that develops back when the season starts. The key as a voter, I think, is to sort of eliminate the noise Look at the numbers, consider the success of teams, and make your decision from there. You've got to make sure you're really doing your research. And sometimes, am I right, it comes down to the final couple days of the regular season before a voter like yourself knows for sure. Kev, I have cast my MVP ballot on the last possible day in each of the last three years. Wow. I'll tell you, it feels all night like this guy's been forcing shots, rushing shots. He's really struggling on the offensive end. Passes to Vucevic. That one doesn't drop. So Los Angeles will take it the other way. They need this. Leonard, no luck. Boy, you can just see the frustration growing on their faces. Nothing going their way. It's just been one of those games, and they need to find a way to turn it around before it gets completely away from them. Los Angeles has gotten nothing but zeros from long range in the second quarter. 0 of 4. And the Clippers call time here. Doris, four years and $76 million for Aaron Gordon. Um, good money if you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, Kevin. And in today's NBA, Aaron Gordon is well worth it. This guy is on the upswing of his career. He's got plenty of room for growth. Tremendous athlete and getting more and more skilled. And it's getting closer. The All-Star voting with just seven days left. Here's how it's shaping up. And hey guys, I think it's fair to say things are finally coming into focus. We're getting a really good idea of who's going to make it. Well, you look at Leonard. He has a huge vote total right now. Number three, in fact, among Western Conference players. And looking more and more like he'll be a starter. And that's really a tribute to the work he's put in this season. He's earned each and every one of those votes. And keep tuning in for updated results. You can visit NBA.com for more. Well, obviously, this is where Mo Bamba is so dangerous. You make a mistake on the defensive end, he's going to take free throws. And that one falls for Bamba. And you look at this Magic roster, so much potential. I think, Greg, they have done a great job of drafting to the style of play they want to play. Guys who want to get after it on the defensive end. Guys who can switch and slide on the perimeter. Guys who can protect the rim. That is the backbone of this organization. That one misses. And didn't have a single free throw in that first quarter, but he started to play with a little bit more of an edge to his game here in the second. Here's Orlando now. What a stretch they've got going here. 17-2. 
Got a piece of it. Paul George with the steal. Beverly for three. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Beverly. And taking a broader look here at the year-over-year -year scoring trend for Williams. And looking at his offensive numbers from the past few years, it seems like teams around the league have kind of figured him out. Uh, he's having to work a lot harder for his points, and they haven't been coming nearly as easily as they used to. Augustine passes to Ross. Pass to Augustine. Let's the three fly. Sinks the three-pointer. Augustine's got his third basket of the night. Yeah, and they're starting to warm up from the field this quarter. Augustine's gone three for three from deep so far. Perfect. George against Ross. Baseline Jay on the way. Rebound by the Magic. Bamba's got rebound number nine now. What an effort here tonight. There's the pass to Augustine. A three-pointer off the mark. He is too good a shooter, guys, to be left open like that. The defense just dodged a bullet there. Los Angeles with another miss. Boy, it's been a struggle in this quarter, and the team needs more from him, there's no doubt. And the dunk by Bamba. We know one of the best attributes of Mo Bamba is his extraordinary length, boy. It is a handful for defenders to deal with. Now, here's Beverly. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Zubac finds Beverly. Outside Leonard. Over Gordon. Oh, and it looks like that's going to be a goaltending call. Yep, that's it. So they'll get the basket. Yeah, that's a tough call for the refs to make there. I I'm not sure it was on the way down, but that's, that's how they saw it. The Magic making a switch here. Isaac's checked in. Orlando's gotten a success rate of just over 50% from three-point tonight. Four of seven shooting. Augustine against Beverly. Stolen away. Nice job to interrupt the alley-oop attempt there. And now running up the court. Leonard pushing it up. Oh, and the jam by Leonard. Well, an all-star willing to do all kinds of dirty work on the offensive end. Kawhi mixing it up. Beverly against Augustine. Isaac passes to Vucevic. From seven, count it. Vucevic has got his first points of the game. Not a lot of resistance on the inside, and they're taking full advantage. And here are the Clippers now. Beverly with the ball. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. Here's Leonard. Falls back and drains the fadeaway jumper. Uh, Kawhi Leonard is efficient with his shooting form. Makes it look easy right there. Pass to Gordon. With the fadeaway. And there are the Magic with another bucket. Yeah, that was the third straight high percentage look. The defense has allowed. The, the defenders have got to start putting bodies on bodies. Now here's Leonard. A 35-point game for him in the win against Miami. This guy just can't find his rhythm. And you look up at the scoreboard, they absolutely need his productivity. Ross dishes to Vucevic. Kicks it to Augustine. Misses the three. And so it's Leonard with it. He'll bring it up for Los Angeles. Misses off the left iron. Well, the defense flat out awful right there, and he couldn't punish them for their mistake. And the foul called on Kawhi Leonard. That'll be his second foul of the game. Gordon deciding where to go with it. To the right side. Passes it to Vucevic. Shot clock at six. They get it again. It's through for a second basket. He's now two for six. I'm sorry. That's poor defense down low again. It's been a mismatch thus far in the paint. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions 
Right now, they need a basket. Now, here's Beverly. He's still scoreless so far in this one. George against Gordon. Looking to end his cold spell. And it's George missing. Orlando's gone two for five from three-point land since the end of the first. Gordon kicks to Ross. Fires for three. They get it back. And then Gordon with the dunk. Well, it's six foot nine. Great athlete. Aaron Gordon can be a problem on the glass. Here's Beverly. A look at his stats. He averages a bit over eight points a game. Pass to Leonard. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. And the Raptors went all in in trading for Kawhi Leonard last season, Doris. Great talent surrounding him in Toronto, but this past summer, he decided to move on. But Kevin, a championship makes the gamble worthwhile if you were Toronto. For Kawhi, any team he plays on is going to have a chance to win. And now this young man, eight champion, starts a new chapter. The first one falls. Doris, you've accomplished so much in your award-winning career. What was your first experience in broadcasting? Kevin, my first experience was I left coaching, and they put Providence College women's basketball on radio. That was the first ever game I got to call. It was so cool. Uh, tell me yours. What was the very first? Did you study this? How did you get into broadcasting? I did. Our high school had a radio station, and the first basketball broadcast was underneath the bleachers, looking through popcorn boxes and legs of the people uh, that were standing in the bleachers so that I could see the court from the basement. Amazing. Because that's where the that's where the telephone cables were to plug in our equipment. And wow. I was uh, 16 years old. Incredible. I remember it very well. Incredible. Very well. <laughs> and here's Fultz after Paul George getting his three to go. Vucevic to the pass to Gordon. And it's Gordon finishing it off. Well, you can see why his teammates love playing with him. Vucevic willing to find the open guy. 116 left to play in the first half. Defense! 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 Now, here's Shamit, guarded by Fultz. Leonard with the bucket. I tell you what, it's, it's almost like stealing to watch how he plays the game from this seat. They are enjoying the commanding lead. And it really gives them the opportunity to give their starters a rest. Always critical when you get ready for that home stretch. Vucevic, the basket good off the assist from Fultz. Fultz has got assist number five here tonight. Well, after a less than stellar start in the first quarter, you like to see that shot go down. And Los Angeles guys uh, shooting the measly 26% in the second quarter. Left side, Leonard. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. Many thought the Raptors or Lakers would land Kawhi, but in the end, he came to the Clippers to write his own legacy. Returning to Southern Cal, where he grew up, was a big part of his decision. The big surprise was how Kawhi was out recruiting other stars behind the scenes to join him Take a break. with Take the a Clippers. Break. Two shots. Free throw good from Kawhi Leonard. We are looking at the MVP of the 2014 finals. Can we remember that in that series, Kawhi Leonard shot 60% and he guarded LeBron James? Here's what Orlando's going with right now. Ken Burch has checked in for Gordon. And it's Aminu in for Jonathan Isaac. Orlando's gotten cold from deep in the second quarter. Just 2 of 6 from long range. Here's Burch. Good work defensively by Morris. Two seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Shamit the pass to Morris. That doesn't fall either. He's missed his first two shots tonight. And it's Fultz with the ball for the Magic. Out to the right wing. Here's Vucevic. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. And now running up the court. Leonard pushing it up. There's Shamit. That's good. And it's Leonard with the assist. Leonard's got three assists in the game. 
Well, Kawhi Leonard's passing skills have developed over the years, and if you give him that much attention, he'll find his teammates. And so it's Orlando. Holding a very comfortable 25-point lead as the quarter comes to a close. They've been playing some inspired defense, giving up very few easy points. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Alongside Aaron Gordon. Aaron, you guys came out and played extremely well. What was the mindset in the first half? Uh, we just tried to come out here, really stick to our principles, pick up the pace, and really be aggressive, and it turned out in the high-scoring half. Just the way you want to play. Thanks for your time. Back to you, Kevin. All right, Dave, thank you. And time now for the halftime break with the third quarter soon to follow right here on 2K Sports. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. And what a show being put on here for the home fans tonight. I'm Ernie Johnson, along with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Muhammad Bamba led the way in the first half. He had 12 points, two assists, and nine rebounds. What did you think, Kenny, about what we saw from the Magic? Well, they just about ran their offense to perfection. They pounded the ball inside, and the entry feeds were on time and on the money. It was a clinic to watch. The second half is going to be no contest if they keep getting shots eight feet and in. Shaq, what was your takeaway on the Clippers? Well, they gave up too many good looks. You look at the field goal percentage against them, this tells the whole story. Not enough activity defensively, not enough disruption, Ernie. Like, Kenny disrupts me all the time, not enough disruption. And now with the second half about to get underway, let's send you back courtside. See everybody with Kevin Harlan. Well, we've got a second half of basketball for you. We think it's going to be pretty good. A big comeback, though, is needed for this game to be competitive, and it probably has to happen quickly. You have to like what we're seeing so far from Kawhi Leonard. Man, he's been running wild on him through that first half. Absolute dynamite on offense. Boy, he has been shouldering the load. Aggressive, skilled, talented, and thus far, unstoppable. And as we dive into the second half, we'll find out if the next two quarters are any different from the first two. So far, it has been a runaway. And the Clippers, looking at who they've got, Harrell is out there with Ibiza Zubac. Then it's Patrick Beverly. Then it's Paul George. And it's Leonard in at the three, the small forward. Offensive rebound. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. Seven foot six, 260 pounds. Vucevic, a skilled basketball player. He is tough to guard. Seven feet, 260 pounds. Vucevic has a big, strong body with great footwork inside Doris, but he doesn't shoot a lot of free throws. He doesn't, Kevin, and he can struggle at times to finish through contact. If he were a better leaper, I think he'd get to the line more. This guy is just so smart and elusive with his footwork. Shoot two. So, this is a big time player now, make no mistake. Free throw drops for Vucevic. A lot of switching on every possession in the NBA from a defensive standpoint, and you see the way Doris offenses are adjusting to that. Yeah, I think, number one, you have to attack the switch. That's first and foremost. And it's an interesting balance between attacking and being patient because the one thing you're ultimately seeking in every switch is a favorable matchup for yourself. That's where a critical thinking guard who knows where to find and put the ball is so critical to your success. Well, that's a good way to look at it. Augustine against Beverly. And there's the pass to Leonard. High post, Zubats. Back to Leonard. Harrell kicks to Leonard. Just four to shoot. George from deep three-point land. I love, Kevin, that Terrence Ross is trying to affect the shot-making ability of his opponent. He can be a pesky defender. Oh, Leonard in position. Takes the alley-oop pass and dunks it down. Incredible wingspan, unbelievable hands. The alley-oop is easy. 
Augustine against Beverly. Pass to Ross. Trying to find Vucevic. Gets it to him. Shoots over Zubac. And it's Vucevic missing. And being that close to the hoop, I thought he had enough room to finish that one. Passes it to Leonard. Rebounded by Isaac. Isaac's got six rebounds in the game. Here's Ross. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. It's going to be on Montrez Harrell. And this is where Terrence Ross turns himself into a weapon. Drawing these fouls, getting to the free throw line. He is such an excellent free throw shooter. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. That free throw good from Ross. So he gets them both. And uh, we're about a minute and a half here into the second half. Beverly feeling it out a bit. Ross grabs the board. Ross has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Well, trying to find themselves in the second half here. Just one for four from the field. Can someone in the group get hot? Let's see. The Magic again can't hit. He's got to be disappointed with himself on that one. He has got to knock those down. George, that's a two-pointer. The Clippers keep it alive. And so it's Ross. He brings it up for Orlando. They've only allowed two points so far here in the second half. Outside Gordon. To the paint. Here's Vucevic. Trains it from nine feet away. Vucevic has got nine points. Their first basket in four tries. Let's see if that basket gets them going. It can be contagious now. The Clippers have gone only one of five from the field since halftime. A very slow start offensively. The fadeaway. Leonard, no luck. A fadeaway, not a terrible idea, but he needs to make the game easier on himself. He's overcomplicating things. Isaac passes to Gordon. Dishes it to Vucevic and play stops. Green. Whistle on what looks to be an illegal screen. Uh, beyond the leaning, you could see his feet weren't set on that screen. Easy call. You know, he's just leaning a little bit. You try to get away with it, but boy, the official all over it. And the Clippers making a change here. Williams has checked in. Loads it up there for Harrell. Out of bounds, Orlando takes possession. Now, let's take a quick look at the numbers for Isaac. He's averaging about seven points a game, three rebounds, and two assists. I mean, the numbers aren't bad on their own, but, but he knows that he can help this team in a bigger way. And sometimes it comes down to the flow of the offense. One night it's your night, another night perhaps it's somebody else's. Back to Augustine. A good finish at the rack off the slick feet. 11 points in the game. Boy, don't you love to see Aaron Gordon make these kinds of decisions. This guy is fully capable of recognizing open teammates. Augustine's gotten four of his seven shots to go. It's Williams with the drive. And that one, good. Well, use the pick and going right to the cup. I love the aggressiveness. Orlando, they've gone two of five, shooting here in the third quarter. Augustine against Williams. Now, here's Vucevic, guarded closer. Six to shoot, pass to Gordon. Over Harrell. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. And this, to me, is where Aaron Gordon can excel. This guy embraces contact on the way up. The Magic have made 10 of their 14 tries at the free throw line in the game. And I think this is a strength of this team. Solid numbers at the line across the board, 77% collectively. Oh. 
Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First one falls for him. Well, I think the things that Aaron Gordon has added to his game, specifically that reliable three-point shot, is a really welcome sign. This guy has an incredible upside. And Orlando making a change here. Bombas checked in. And both free throws good for Gordon. And right now at about 85% from the line, that's up from where it was in that first half. And the pass to Harold. Outside Leonard. Outside George. Goes up the baseline, and he hits the jump shot. George has got 12. Yeah, Paul George, a tremendous jump shooter. Squares up, knocks it down. The defense has got to be better. Ross on the wing. Pass to Gordon. Bamba kicks to Gordon. Another miss by Orlando. The Clippers have gone three of eight so far in the third quarter, looking to lock in that rhythm. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Well, Kevin, one of the things that teams are more aware of in the age of analytics is the importance of sleep. Those teams are making adjustments. Morning shoot-arounds have been moved in some cases to the afternoon or eliminated altogether. There are many fewer teams that are taking red-eye flights across country. And some teams even give players orange-tinted glasses to encourage them to sleep. There's a lot of work to be done in this field, but the direction is clear. Continuing to evolve. All right, David, thank you. Now here is Augustine. He's got 11. Pass to Gordon. Back to Ross. That's tipped. And they turn over the 24-second buzzer, signaling the shot clock violation. Let's bring up the 2K leaderboard to show you the teams leading the league in assists this season. The Clippers third. And, and you know, when your team has a lot of assists, it's testimony to the unselfishness, the, the patience, the ball movement, the player movement. They have shown all of that. Now, here is George. 12 points for him. Pass to Williams. In the corner, Harrell with it. Fires from deep. Orlando grabs the miss. Bamba's got double-digit rebounds now in the game. And wow, you just have to love the motor of Montrez Harrell when he's on the floor. Great on the glass, and he just plays with such a, a fire. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Looking to get it going. Here's Leonard. And it's Orlando with the rebound. And, and he has definitely been struggling in this quarter. And you know what? They keep calling his number, and they're simply trying to get him out of this funk. And with Harrell, you can see how his energy spreads to the rest of the team. Reminds me a bit of what Fareed used to bring to teams. Harrell is also undersized, but boy, he makes up for it in so many ways. And here's Augustine. Kawhi Leonard getting his three to go. The pass to Vucevic. On the wing, Gordon. Rebound by Harrell. Well, they have the advantage, but you still feel like this guy needs to find a way to get himself going. George, no good. Orlando, they've gone a lackluster three of nine from the field since halftime. Outside, Gordon. Pass to Vucevic. Unloads. Once again, off the mark, Orlando. And the well is running dry for him right now. Nothing falling. And this is where you hope that he can find something easy so he can see the ball go through the net. Orlando making some changes. Al Farouk Aminu, he's checked in for Gordon. Evan Fournier comes in for Terrence Ross. And it's Fulton for Augustine. The Clippers also changing it up. Marcus Morris comes in for Ivica Zubas. And it's Jackson in for Leonard. 
Boy, you better keep the seven-footer Mo Bamba away from the cup. What an easy finish. And so it's Williams who brings it up for the Los Angeles Clippers. He kicks it to Morris. Back to Williams. No good on the shot. So Orlando will take it the other way. Fournier passes to Fultz. Morris against Vucevic. From down low, here's Aminu, and good that time. Aminu's got six. They are just killing them on the interior. Now here's Williams. He's been a reliable scorer for him as he's averaging up over 13 points a game. Here's George. Good on the 13-footer. Uh, how good, Kevin, is Paul George at getting separation? He uses the screen perfectly and sticks it to the defense. And stolen by Harrell for the finish. And then George with the jam. Now, Paul George is an exceptional athlete and demonstrating his insane dunking skills there. <laughs> Get this guy in the dunk competition. Fultz kicks to Aminu. Vucevic against Harrell. Passes it to Bamba. Six on the shot clock. Over Morris. And it's Orlando with another. Guys, his consistency in terms of shooting has really helped them seize control. Los Angeles has gone one of four and three-point shots here in the third. Jackson dishes to Harrell. He feeds it to George. And it's George finishing it off. Well, an aggressive player at the rim. Paul George has the kind of athleticism to make a defense look silly. And here's Fultz. He has five. Here's Vucevic. Back to Fultz. He dishes it to Aminu. Over George. They grab their own miss. Bamba passes to Vucevic. Over Harrell. And it's Vucevic. That time on the assist by Bamba. Bamba's got three assists tonight. One forty-six left to play in the third. Jackson against Aminu. Lob pass to George. It's stolen by Vucevic. Morris against Aminu. Over Morris. Here's Bamba. And the dunk by Bamba. That is a product of pure effort, guys. I agree, and that's nothing new coming from him, G.A. He loves going to work on the rebounding, going to work on the boards. What about the decisive finish? Great timing, tremendous force. No doubt about it. He has done a ton to help his team, but he's going to have to do even more if they want to have a chance to get back in this. Now, here's Fultz. He gives the team some steady offense, a bit under 10 points a game. Shots good by Williams. Moving it around, eight of their last ten coming off assists. The Magic shooting 47% from the field in the third. Now here's Fultz. He's guarded by Williams. And Vucevic kicks to Fournier. Pass to Bamba. Here's Aminu. Bamba passes to Fultz. Here's Vucevic. The basket good off the assist from Fultz. 14 points for Vucevic. Mr. Vucevic has elite range for a big man. He will punish you from downtown if you let him. Outside, George. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. Well, two long-range bombs in the first, but that's stalled out right now. Now Fultz. He's got five. It's Vucevic, top of the key. Down low. And the officials call him for a three-second violation.
And so it's the Orlando Magic having no problems at all. Up 29 points heading into the next quarter. The scoring has been tremendous, and they are shooting lights out with very high accuracy. We've got more in store for you right after this. And now let's go back to a play from earlier as we show you our State Farm assist of the game. And he's always been uh, the favorite to bag this honor. These kind of feeds are his bread and butter. Well, this is why, Greg, great point guard play is so critical in today's NBA. And you see it right there on display. And there may not be a lot of drama down the stretch as we head into the fourth quarter, but stranger things have happened. Our fourth quarter action underway presented by Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups. So on the floor for Orlando. Al Farouk Amino is out there with Ennis. And there's Fultz. And it's Birch in at the five down low. Now here's Fultz after the miss from Reggie Jackson. Now here's Fultz. He's guarded close. Aminu with the bucket. Well, you can see Markel Fultz starting to get comfortable, understanding how to thread the pass through the defense. And for the Clippers, they're shooting just 31% in the game. Jackson with it. Now the pass to Kevin Gill. That misses off the backboard. Orlando's gotten the three-point bug tonight. They've taken 15 shots outside the arc. They're 6 of 15. Pass to Birch. Doris, all right, this is going to come out of the blue here, but if you had to choose between raising the height of the basket or widening the floor or even widening the lane, which would it be? I have very strong feelings on this, Kevin, and I, for me it would be widening the floor. And the reason I say that is it feels to me in the last couple of years there are more sideline violations where teams are turning it over because they're trying to get to that corner three, one of the most advantageous, best shots in today's game. But because that three-point line is so close to the sideline out of bounds, we're seeing too many violations. So if I had to choose between one or the other, I would absolutely widen the floor. Now here's Jackson. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. And as long as Reggie Jackson is healthy, he's going to give you some punch as a lead guard. Solid scoring option and a guy who's also unselfish in terms of getting his teammates involved. And that one falls for Jackson. And for the last half decade, Reggie Jackson has been good for about 15 points a game. And that is about the consistency you can expect from Jackson. He's always been a talent. The key for him is just staying on the floor. Rodney McGruder's checked in for Marcus Morris. And so Jackson nails both of them. Remember the time, Doris, when it was rare to see stars changing teams? Now we read about it every day. No question, Kevin. Think back to my formative years watching the NBA as a fan. Larry Bird was a Boston Celtic. Magic Johnson was a Los Angeles Laker. The trend in today's NBA is that shorter player contracts, more player uh, control over where they want to be. And the reality is this, Kevin, at some point, uh, free agency entered the equation. It's appropriate. It's fair. They've earned the right to choose where they play. And Fultz doesn't fear physical contact. I think that's what makes him special. When he's knife into the rack, he's ready to take on the hit from the defense. Oh. 
Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. Bad free throw missing. And he sinks the second. The Clippers have gone 0 of 3 to start the fourth quarter. Jackson kicks to Magruder. Passes it to Green. Four on the clock. Shoots from the elbow. And it's Shamit missing. Orlando, they've gone three of five here in the fourth quarter. Pretty good numbers coming out of the break. Good on the shot. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket, coming off a pretty pass. And here's Jackson. Around three minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. And too long on the shot. The Magic have gotten four of their six shots to fall so far here in the fourth. A pretty nice efficiency there. Throws it up high. Oh, what a pass. And then he lays it in with the circus move. Mm, so smooth. Here's Shamit. Of course, it seems like Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, is one of the most well-liked commissioners in all of sports worldwide. Why do you think that's so? Well, I think he was amongst the most important members of the staff of his predecessor, David Stern, who obviously oversaw the greatest growth in NBA history. The NBA became a global game. But Adam Silver didn't skip a beat. He is a great listener, a great communicator. And I've said this about the NBA for a very long time. It is a league that is in constant self-evaluation process. It is always looking for ways to improve the league, whether that means organizationally or with the play between the lines, and that's all you can ask for, Kevin. And so here are the Clippers. Aminu missing his last shot. They kick it out to Green. Now Ennis to the middle. Here's Birch. Great tee that time from Green. No one to blame on that one but himself. You get looks like that, you've got to take advantage. Jackson. Orlando grabs the miss. Just can't find a shot. It's no wonder they're losing. I mean, he's been completely scoreless all night. The shot by Birch, no good. And he saw the play develop, but the pass just wasn't there. It was a really good thought for sure, but the lob has got to be better than that. And Jackson has become a reliable three-point shooter. That's a shot you got to respect. Volts kicks to Ennis. Here's Birch. 14 feet away. Once again off the mark, Orlando. Not his best game, but they're still getting it done collectively. Here's Magruder. Drops in the layup for two. Magruder's got his first basket of the night. And giving up some inches inside, but makes up for it with an aggressive style. Well, he's attacking, he's forcing the issue, and that's simply stated a terrific play. Now, here's Fultz. Inside. Another miss, and they desperately need a bucket. Los Angeles has gone two for two from three-point land to start the fourth quarter. There's Green with the three. It's good. The assist this time from Jackson. Green's got himself on the board with three there. Yeah, great outside shooting, really fueling this run. Time call here. The Magic decide to talk it over. 
Rush, do you have high hopes for the new draft lottery system uh, to, to keep every team competitive to the very end of the season? Well, one of the keys in implementing this new draft lottery system was to make sure that the bottom three teams were given equal opportunity to get that top draft choice. I think you did see it have some effect on uh, play and teams trying to be competitive while understanding they're still going to have an opportunity to build their team through the draft. But here's the reality. The NBA has got to be under review constantly. There's a process in play. It's one of the most proactive leagues in the country in terms of always looking for little things to make sure their game is the best it can be. Attention to detail. Well said. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. That free throw good from Fultz. And the Clippers making a switch here. Noah's checked in. Good on both. Of course, here's something kind of interesting. There's been a lot of talk about moving the draft to after free agency. What would that look like? Well, I think talent is always going to be at a premium. So I would think if there's a, a guy that's the absolute definitive number one pick, he's going number one regardless of roster construction. But the reality is it might help those teams who maybe if they know who's on the roster, it might change the kind of draft selection they would make. So it's an interesting supposition. Uh, we'll see if the NBA moves in that direction. No clue <laughs> where that pass was going. That is a brutal turnover. Carter Williams with it. Pass to Fultz. Now here's Ennis. There's the pass to Carter Williams. The three-pointer no good. And now the Clippers on the break. No good on the triple. And so it's Ennis bringing it up now for the Magic. Here's Fultz. And finished off by Fultz. And how about the attitude of Fultz? When he's taking it inside, he's aiming to hurt somebody's field. Los Angeles has gone three of four from downtown here in the fourth. Beverly dishes to Green. Back to Beverly. It's a nice passing here by Los Angeles. Doris, in 2004, the Charlotte Bobcats became the NBA's 30th team. When do you think we're going to see another team added, whether it's an expansion or, or even multiple expansions? Did? Well, let's go directly to the most important source, and that's Commissioner Adam Silver, who has said that expansion is inevitable, but right now not a huge priority. So, you know, listen, we've heard Seattle is on the short list of cities that wants to get a team, and what a great city, what a great NBA fan base. I hope someday we get back to Seattle. So much history up there. You're correct. To the inside, and so the Clippers with another turnover. In the corner, Shamit with it. A three-pointer is right on target. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. The Magic have gone only 6 of 14 from the field in the fourth. And here is Carter Williams. Fultz looking around. Here's a one-do. It's rebounded by Noah. Now the Clippers with it. They're on a 14-4 run right now. Beverly makes it off the glass. Well, easy money, right? I like the strategy. Go inside, get a high percentage look. Orlando's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Pass to a one do. Over green. And it's a one do missing. LA has gone to three point range for 12 of their points in the final quarter on four of five shooting. And it's Shamit missing. Normally he'll drill that shot, and I'm, I'm sure they'll look to find him in that spot again. Uh, no doubt. Very good play call, good execution. Sometimes it just doesn't fall. He sees his man has the angle on the interior and drops a dime right there. 
Now Beverly. Here's Shamit. There's the steal. And the shot goes in from Fultz. Fultz has got nine points now in the quarter. Here's Beverly. Doris, when you look at the success of international players, and the league has a litany of very good international players, Doncic being the latest success uh, is the perception changing about these kids when they come from overseas and play in the NBA? Well, one of the greatest, and to me, the greatest international player of all time, Dirk Nowitzki, a Hall of Fame player, probably changed the perception uh, to start with. Now, listen, over the years, Luka is going to have perhaps a Hall of Fame career if he stays healthy. The reality is this. The NBA is looking for the best players to man those 15 roster spots of the 30 NBA teams. It doesn't matter where you're from, what the color of your skin is. If you can play the game of basketball and play it at the highest level, the NBA wants you to be a part of their league. Well, the undrafted Rodney Magruder, Greg, has earned his way into the NBA. It was 25 by the time of Magruder's rookie season. He has spent some time overseas and in the G League, but he's improved his game and has kind of carved out a spot here in the league. And the first one at the line is good. And the Clippers making a change here. And so he makes both from the line. Orlando's gotten off to an 0 for 2 start from downtown here in the fourth quarter. Carter Williams with it. Passes to Fultz. Jacks up a three. Joaquin Noah grabs the miss. Noah's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. And it's Magruder missing. Well, they are daring him to miss, and he obliges. Here's Fultz. Softly drops in the floater. Fultz has got 11 points here in just the second half. And I just love when Fultz goes with that floater, showing a desire to add to his arsenal offensively. Shamit the pass to Noah. Here's Magruder. There's a minute 34 and left to play here in the fourth. Over in the corner, Beverly. Pocket four. Good on the triple. Well, guys, this was never really a contest. Just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for the Magic. It was a standout performance across the board. I mean, it was like watching a cat play with a mouse. They, they were able to do more or less whatever they wanted. And you can mark this one down in the W column. It'll mark their 23rd of the season. Important. With this win, they split the season series at a game apiece and also avoid the sweep. And that has to be a relief. And what a tremendous standout performance it was for Muhammad Bamba. Just an outpouring of points from him. Nobody could do much to keep him from dropping it in. Here's Carter Williams after the made shot from Joaquin Noah. Volts gets to Carter Williams. From outside, off the mark. Shamit on the wing. Off target with his three. And you don't want to give up that kind of look too often. A one do passes to Ennis. Here's a one do. That one wide left on offense. Here are the Clippers. They're on a 14 to 6 run. Beverly for three, and he's good on the three ball. Yeah, coming down the stretch, they've become reliant upon their perimeter game. Boy, the three-point arc has been a major factor in what they've done here tonight. You love the aggressiveness. And so it's Orlando taking this one by a big margin. 
It was a tale of two teams tonight. One that was in total control, operating flawlessly, and the other just searching for answers that they could never find. I mean, the energy here is just so tremendous. Fans involved from the get-go, and once they started to really pour it on, it was fun to see that rhythm and flow from their perspective. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thank you, Kevin, with Evan Fournier. Hey, Evan, does a win like tonight's against this kind of competition show you how far you've come as a team? Yeah, sure. You know, we obviously showing progress. But uh, we want to be a, a very good team. We are very ambitious. Nothing wrong with a little ambition, Evan. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. And that'll wrap it up, folks. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.